Hello and welcome to the NevilleResearch.com video. So today is a great day because we're going to talk about the Billing Bear book list. One of the most important discoveries ever made in Shakespeare authorship research and pretty much it's pretty strong evidence that Henry Neville did write the works of Shakespeare. It's very, very strong evidence. And I'm not going to, you know, play it down any because I think it's literally the smoking gun proof. When combined with all the other evidence, of course. Anyway, this is going to be a short video. I just want to introduce the book list, explain what it is, and explain why there's very, very good reason to believe that Henry Neville actually owned these books. Now, the book list is at the Berkshire Record Office, or Berkshire Record Office, in England. And um, I went there in August of last year and um, took photos of the book list. And the book list was compiled in 1780. So uh, Billing Bear is, is the sort of the ancestral home of the Neville family. Henry Neville's father built it. He grew up there. And then when his father died, he moved back there. He lived there for the, the rest of his life until 1615. And then his descendants lived at Billing Bear. So the library of Billing Bear has books that he owned. Now, there are many examples of books on this list that we know he owned because they're at Audley End now. They were moved to Audley End in the 19th century and they have inscriptions to him or his handwriting is in them or they're very connected to him like uh, one of the books is dedicated to him, this sort of thing. So we know that he owned many of these books, but I want to look at one specific example. Now, this is this book called Roman Antiquities. Um, it's the 1546 edition is listed on the book list. And it's a book in Greek, but it's a history of Rome. And it was, it's considered one of the possible sources for Coriolanus. And so Henry Saville was Henry Neville's tutor. He was one of the great experts in classical learning in England at the time. And he did a translation of Tacitus. And in that translation, he has a bibliography where he lists the books that he cites. And the exact same edition, the 1546 edition, is in his bibliography. So going back here, this book was likely a book that he read with his tutor, Henry Saville. So probably at his tutor's direction, he purchased this book. And Henry Saville and Henry Neville spent almost four years together in Europe, traveling around, and Henry Neville was studying the classics with Henry Saville during this time. So this book, that actual book, is at Oddly End right now, and you can visit my blog and see, this is Henry Neville's handwriting. There's an annotation in the book. It's Henry Neville's handwriting. There's just no question about it. It just, every every letter matches other examples that we have of his handwriting. And even the asterisk here matches examples of his handwriting. So we can be extremely confident this is Henry Neville's handwriting. It relates to um, Coriolanus and Rape of Lucrece, the things he's talking about, uh, feature in those works of Shakespeare. And it's really proof that you know, he was able to read Greek, he was studying Roman history, and of course we know that many of Shakespeare's plays are about Roman history. Now, there are two copies of the Decameron, Boccaccio's Decameron, on the Billing Bird book list, and only one of them is at oddly end. Um, but there's two copies on the book list. You can see here there's one, and then here's another one. And then it's not just that it was, we know that the book is on the book list and one of them is at oddly end. We also have these scribbles that Henry Neville made in 1591 
of Alabek and Rustico. And you can go on my blog for more information, but Alabek and Rustico is a story in that book. So this is very strong evidence that not only did Henry Neville own the book, he read it. And of course, um, the Decameron is a the source for All's Well That Ends Well and Cymbeline and Two Gentlemen of Verona also take some content from that book. And even Sonnet 144 is often connected to Alabek and Rustico. So that's a major source for the works of Shakespeare. And we know that Henry Neville owned probably two copies of the book. And we know that he read it enough to know about Alabek and Rustico because he made these, these scribbles on the back of a letter. Okay, now this is the thing that's really exciting. Now this book is not at Oddly End and I don't know where the book is, but this is the source of Hamlet. This is the source, the main source of Hamlet. It's called the Gesta Denorum, is how it's usually referred to. And this is a 1576 edition of this book. So this is about the time that Henry Neville was in, in Europe. And there's just no question here. This is very strong evidence that Henry Neville owned the main source for Hamlet. Now, I've not been able to locate this book yet. I don't know if it still exists. It's not an oddly end, so that's an open question. But like I said, everything is in line to suggest that he owned this book. And it's quite a coincidence, let me tell you, that this book list just happens to have this book list on it. Now, let me explain to you how I've known about this book list before I actually was able to visit the record office and, and look at it. I had known about it for about eight or nine months. I had no idea this book was on this book list. I had no idea that the source of Hamlet was on this book list. I was very excited to get to look at the list and then you can imagine what it was like to discover this on the list. But that wasn't the biggest thing that I found. This, Cynthia's Glee Hecatomiti, is the source for Othello and Measure for Measure. This is an Italian book. There's absolutely no question it's the source for these two plays. It was not widely read in England at the time. It was not translated. But here we go. We have a copy on the Billion Bear book list and 1580 is the date, the exact time Henry Neville was in Italy. So this is very strong evidence that Henry Neville owned this book and it is a very major source for Shakespeare. This book is unfortunately not an oddly end, this copy. I don't know where it is, but this is an incredible coincidence. With all the other evidence we have connecting Henry Neville with the works of Shakespeare, all the annotations at Oddly End, all the connections between his vocabulary and Shakespeare's vocabulary, all the connections in people, Ben Jonson, the Herbert brothers, Southampton, the Virginia Company, everything fits. And then this book is on this list. Incredible. So, you know, I wanted to introduce you to the Billing Bear book list and give you some idea of how important it is. It's obviously important. It's obviously incredible evidence. And there needs to be more research on it. I'm working with others to do that. But I just wanted to share this video with you, get you excited about what's going on here, because we are very close to solving the Shakespeare authorship question. And this is the major discovery, one of the most major discoveries that is going to get us to the complete solution. So please click like and subscribe and tell your friends about this channel and get ready for a lot more content coming soon. Thank you so much.